last video, we saw how to calculate the number of ways to arrange uh, R of n distinct objects. And the formulas were given here. These were called permutations. Now, in, now we want to look at the number of ways to group R of these distinct objects. Now, in a grouping, the order is not important. I've got to emphasize the not here. Okay, it's not important. And this type of grouping is often called combination. And we would say we're interested in the number of combinations of R of indistinct objects. Now, as an example to get going, let's go back to the previous setting that we were looking at. We had eight runners. Now, in this case, let's give them names, but I don't want to write down a lot of names. So let's just call them A through H. I hope that's eight. Okay, and remember when we were doing permutations, we were interested in who was going to finish first, uh, second, and third. And we calculated according to this formula here the uh, number of ways it was going to be the permutations of eight things, choose three at a time, which came out to be eight times seven times six, which we calculated as uh, 336. Okay. Now, in, in this case, um, let's just say that uh, A, B, and C were the first three finishers. But if, say, this is uh, was just a trial uh, heat, and it didn't really matter to give awards to first, second, and third place, all we had to do was to finish, determine the top three finishers because they're going to go on to a second heat later on. And, and maybe C realized that he didn't want to go all out, so... He just wanted to finish in the top three. So we're only interested in the groupings here. So what other possible arrangements of these three uh, people would give the same group? Well, of course, we could have A, C, and B, or we could have B would have been the first place and we had, had A and C, or we could have B, C, A, or we could be that C could have gone a little harder and he would have come in first and so we could have had CAB or there could be CBA. Okay, and in fact, if you think about it, these are the only possible uh, arrangements that we could have. And in fact, there are six of these. And in fact, you see that's really consistent with the principle that we had here before because if we wanted to arrange three of all three, three of three objects, three of three people, then that would come out to be what? That would be the uh, permutations of three, choose, taking three, and so that would come out to be three factorial over, well, three minus three is zero factorial. I should have mentioned that that's just one, so that comes out to be six. So we've actually seen how to calculate that number before. Now, what's going on here? Because we saw among these 336, this was one particular finishing, but there were five others in it that would give the same grouping. So if I think about this in terms of, here's a picture of 336 uh, finishers, okay? And so if I've got this grouping with A, B, and C, that's going to be one of the finishings here. But there's five others, so there's a total of six that would end up being exactly this, this, give the same group. So all six of these give one group. Now, supposing I had somebody else like A, F, and G, all right, that might uh, be another finish. But then I would have five others in addition to A, F, and G, which would uh, give exactly the same grouping. So if the question is, what's the number of groups how do we find that number well you see each grouping has six if there's 336 all together it would be 336 divided by six well 
uh, it might be easier to look at that in terms of the permutation problem. 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 6. Uh, that's going to be 8 times 7, or 56. Okay, so now, can we generalize this and come up with a formula like we did before? Well, of course we can. Uh, now, the number that we're going to calculate here is called, this number is called combinations. It's written usually C of NR, or if you use the calculator, the TI writes it as NCR, combinations of N things with choosing R at a time. And how did we calculate this? Well, you see, what was important, we looked at the number of distinct orderings here. That was going to be n p r and then we divided that by the number of arrangements that we had of the the r so this is just going to be r factorial or if you want to write it out in its full glory with all the factorials here what does this uh, numerator become it becomes n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and then you want to multiply that denominator by this. Okay, and fortunately we can calculate these things using uh, calculators. And so let's go just check our arithmetic to see that 56 does work correctly here. Okay, so we'll come back with our calculator. And now, all right, if I want to do calculations, I go to math go over to the probability function, and there's the combinations. Now, I won't make the same mistake I made before. Let's see, we need to put in the 8 first, and then I'll go to math, over to the probability functions, down to the combination formula, and I put in 3, so this is 8 combinations 3. Enter gives us the 56. 56 was what? we had calculated the answer was going to be before here. All right, so now we've seen how to calculate both combinations and permutations.